Why? Just why? Why would you be passing the toilet object into the poop method? That was my first thought when I saw this video on Twitter yesterday. Let's check it out. Essentially, if um, this ass is not empty, we're placing this ass into the toilet and then we empty this ass like so. Right, so essentially, if you pooped once, if you pooped once and you will try to poop again, it's not going to place shit into the toilet. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> well, I feel like this is kind of a bit of a joke, kind of tongue in cheek. It also does feel like a bit of a criticism, a bit of a stab at OOP. And often it feels like when people do that, in my experience, is because they're using the wrong approach or the, the wrong pattern for their problem. As you can see, I jumped in and suggested that maybe the visitor pattern might be a good fit for this problem, as you could have the cat visit the toilet and um, the, the toilet could handle the poop without having any knowledge. Um, it could control uh, the flow. So for those of you that maybe are more unfamiliar with the visitor pattern, it's a good way of separation of concerns. It's a good way of, uh, of adding behaviors to existing objects without kind of having to change those existing objects. Um, it's a pretty cool pattern. Uh, it's a behavioral pattern. And uh, I thought, why not make a video of it? Why not jump in and have a look, see what we can we can achieve in this following this example. So jumped over to PHP Storm. We've got ourselves an empty blank project. And uh, I've initialized Composer so we get some PSR for auto loading. And I'm just going to jump in to the implementation, which is kind of where I like to start a lot of the time because Concrete is often best, and then we can move to abstractions where we need to. So what are we going to have uh, as part of our example? We want to have a, um, a toilet. Uh, toilet is equal to new toilet. And we've got a cat is equal to new cat. And then we want to have the um, toilet. Um, accepts a cat. Right, so this would be our implementation. Um, for the visitor pattern to work, we need two interfaces. We need uh, a visitor interface and then we need a visitable interface. So for this example, I'm going to add a um, contracts namespace. Um, no, a contract namespace. Uh, often uh, there's lots of ways to organize code and just definitely not one for this video, but just for the separation of ease visibility for this, um, I'm, I'm adding a, a contract uh, directory. We're also going to need a, um, a model um, for our cat and our toilet. So let's start off making our um, two, two models. Um, so we need boy, yeah, uh, let. Um, and then we also need a cat. I'm not going to bother with interfaces for the models, um, but in any sort of inheritance or any sort of um, boilerplate, just for this example. So that leads us on to the interfaces that we do we need. That we need the visitable and visitor. So let's make those. We need visitable. Um, that is an interface. And then we need um, a, another class, which is visitor, that will visit um, the visitable, which is also an interface. Okay, so the toilet is what we're visiting. Um, so it's the toilet that needs to Im implement the visitable. Um, implements no vi visit visitable and then the cat is the visitor the man i don't know why it keeps trying to type in me to that visitor cool so what do these um interfaces need to dictate in their their contracts so uh, as we saw in the implementation the the visitable needs to accept a visitor. So the visitable needs a public function of accept and it needs to accept a visitor. Nice. Okay, that's handy. Um, return type at this point is just going to be void. I mean, there's ways we can extend this, which maybe we'll get onto. 
Um, and then the visitor itself needs to um, know how to visit the toilet. So oh, auto completing me visit toilet, and that is going to be um, the toilet model. Void. Cool. Okay, so we go back to our implementation. Um, if we import these, uh, everything. Oh no, we haven't done our implementation of our contracts. So we've got our two contracts with our two methods. So the cat needs to implement um, to visit toilet method, and the toilet needs to implement the accepts method. So this is accepting the visitor, which in our case is the cat. Um, right, so we want to look at our implementation of these. So toilet's probably the more self-explanatory one. So um, in this instance, we want to um, visit. Uh, so we want the visitor to visit the toilet. So we want to pass in this. So that's allowing us to, to pass the toilet into the visitor um, so that the visitor can make use of the toilet. Um, so what um, so what else is this toilet actually um, needing to do other than so what so what is the behavior? So we've got the toilet is accepting a visitor, um, but when the when the visitor um, visits the toilet, what's it going to do? So it probably wants to flush. So we want a public um, method or uh, not method, um, function of flush. And this uh, is this this is going to accept. Um, I mean, let, let's just let's leave. We'll leave that with no arguments at this point. Um, echo flushing. Right, so it doesn't um, doesn't do anything. Uh, it turns void. Um, so when when the, the visitor when the cat visits the toilet, it flushes the um, the toilet. So if we look at the cat, so when the cat visits the toilet, um, what does it want to do? So the cat is going to um, take the toilet that it's that's had accept, accepted to it, and it's going to hit flush. So when we run that, we should get um, the echoing flush, which is pretty cool. But what do we flush um, when we visit the toilet? So following this analogy or following this example, um, we would want to create a um, a poop. So we create a new object um, called poop. We want to make we want to create ourselves a new model. Uh, class, which is poop. What do we want this to have? So we can make, we can actually probably make this a read only. It's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a DTO in a sense. Um, but let's say we've got a public, um, uh, this is like a generic poop. So um, generic public string, um, I don't know, uh, size, type, let's do type and then public string size. Um, so let's say that's a cat poop and maybe it's medium sized. Uh, so what we can do if we actually implement maybe, um, implement to string and then we can we can actually return um sprint f uh this is um uh, we'll just do well, i don't know uh loop of type type and then um, type and size 
this is a <laughs> this is kind of horrible um example here but we're just you know we're just rolling with it and then we take in size as well so following back to our example if we're passing in um poo to the toilet let's have a look we need to accept um poop and then what we can do here is we can say um actually we can just well, let's just keep it simple um so flushing <clears throat> doo -doo -doo, flushing poop and because we've implemented that two string method it's going to echo out what's happening so what we've been able to achieve here is it's not happy there. No implementation of accepts. Do we not do accepts? Oh, okay. I don't know if we did the implementation for visitable accepts. What's up here? Toilet implements visit visitable. Um, try that again. What does toilet have available to it? Steps visitor, which is the cat. Okay, it was confused. <clears throat> okay, let's follow this through then. So the toilet accepts a cat. And then when the cat um, visits the toilet, we pass in the toilet. So this means we're calling the visit toilet method on the cat. So the visitor is the cat in our example. So this implementation, so if we look at the implementation of visit toilet for cat, the cat is now in control of what it does when it visits the toilet. Um, so when the cat visits the toilet, it's passing in. Uh, so it's in control of the creation of its own poo. So we can pass this generic in. So we can say um, it's actually type cat. And we can also say that we want it to be, let's just say it's large. Um, maybe a cat's doing large poos. Okay, so following back to the example, the cat, Visiting the toilet and then the toilet's implementation is flushing using the toilet method. We're passing in the poo and it's echoing out um, the flush. So that's giving us nice separation of concerns and it's not allowing us to add behavior um, to the uh, to, to the cat object because we've, we're visiting the toilet and we're we're kind of um, what's the word? We're kind of building up um, state or we can we can change state. Excuse me. So, talking of state, um, let's say that the poop has a, a status. So we're going to have to move away from read only, and we can make these um, read only, read only public string. Because what we want now is to have a um, protected um, string of status so we can obviously this allows us to change the status of what we're creating without having to touch the original um, object itself so if we just say that's a string and then the default status is un um, flushed so got ourselves what's upset about um flushed okay if we add ourselves some getters and setters for status we can um, now control some more behavior on that. So when a cat goes to the toilet, we can actually say that the toilet needs to understand what to do with the, um, with the poo. So poop can now, we can set the status to um, flushed. And that way, when we flush it, um, if we go back to the poop, we add this to our um status uh, this status so now when we visit the toilet so let's start from the beginning the toilet will accept the cat the cat is going to call its implementation of which is decoupling separation of concerns um of visiting the toilet so we go over to the cat um, we are passing in the cat's creating its poo. It's it's defining um, some behavior. It's defining some state, and it's passing it to the um, to the behavior 
of the toilet. So that goes into flush. And then what we're doing is we've got some control over um, the, uh, we've got some control over that and then we can echo that out. There is a step further you can go with it. So flush um, could actually return who. Um, so we could actually say that after the toilet, we get a poo out of the toilet, maybe when it flushes it down. There's various different ways you can go with it. Some more pure um, implementations of design patterns, some maybe less pure implementations of, the, in this case, the visitor pattern. I think the concept that I want to get across is that visit, visit, not visitor patterns, design patterns generally are really great for um, having a shared understanding, a shared kind of model approach, but they're not something that have to be like completely wed to. Like this isn't a traditional... Um, implementation of the visitor pattern and also you know whilst the visitor pattern is great there are lots of limitations with it too so it's about understanding the tools that you have for the job um, and picking the you know the best tool and ultimately getting it wrong because you will get things wrong and I have done many times and this may be even a really rubbish implementation of the visitor pattern but it's about experimenting it's about playing it's about understanding why you might do something why you might not do something and that's how you become a better engineer it's how you Kind of how, that's that's where the learning happens. That's where the magic happens. Um, so hopefully you've kind of enjoyed this quite trivial, um, light-hearted example. Let me know if you've got any questions about this or any criticisms or anything that you do differently. This is kind of my first code with me, code along. So if you enjoy it, subscribe and let me know that you want me to do more, and I'll explore either other patterns or other things that I enjoy or if I'm passionate, I'm passionate about. And uh, yeah, I will. Uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.